All right, folks, sometimes I just feel the need to preach just for truth's sake and just for releasing truth to the world. Um, I have no patience for non-peaceful environments. I have no patience for bombarding music, secular junk. It's all the wrong spirit. As soon as you invite that spirit into a physical environment, you have literally thrust God out of the building. You have literally thrust out any true love, any true honesty, any true joy, any true peace. Um, it's just, it's unbearable. It's amazing to me, the pleasure of peace. I love waking up early in the morning, like as early as possible, in the peace and quiet of the night, together with God, when I can hear the voice of God. It's pure bliss, it's pure romance, it's pure pleasure. I just, it's a joke, Lord, people. Like I just, I have to admit, folks, I, you know, I just took a trip down to one of the local pubs here, one of the bars, it's, it's an actual restaurant, okay, there, it, yes it has a bar, but it's mostly a restaurant, um, and it's just not a peaceful place, like, you know, when, when the music is all playing and they got all the screens all flashing all around, you're just like, there's no peace here, like, there is no peace here. There's just a bunch of cortisone like pulsing through everyone's veins and uh, I don't know. I'm just like, oh God. So peace is priceless. I cannot preach enough on the pricelessness of peace and sanctity and holiness. You are not looking, especially young ladies out there, what a trap we have. You are not looking for a giant parade of eyeballs. You are not looking for a bunch of eyeballs, like giving you attention. And, oh God. It's like what everyone is looking for is the presence of God. That is where pleasure is found. That is where peace is found. That's where bliss and intimacy and satisfaction is found. Um, what a war. I mean, what a turmoil. And I see so many people's hearts, like especially young girls, their hearts just getting totally wounded and hardened as a result of spending time in these chaotic environments where there's all sorts of like unchurched, like unspiritual guys that just like are crazy and they're thinking about girls and like what a jarring assault on the heart of a young lady, you know, just chaos upon the self-esteem. It's like the church is the church. The church is gold. The church is the bride of Christ. Um, peace is priceless. I cannot stop saying that at all times. Peace is priceless. Like, just pray, you know, for your God-ordained spouse. If that's Anyways, um, so, it is, seriously, it's Saturday night, it's 8, 10 p.m. I am probably going to bed early because I love the morning blessing. I love getting up early with God. I, I, and when I get up early with God and the whole town is asleep and it's perfectly quiet, it is pure heaven. It's pure bliss. The presence of God is all surpassing. I don't care how many people you throw into some secular party scene, it doesn't do anything for you. It doesn't do anything. You're just kind of standing there like, man, a whole bunch of these people are going to hell. They don't have anything to say about God. They're completely just running on like juices and cortisone right now, running around. Um, and you're just like, I just cannot be here. I love the people, but this is just not the right spirit here that is being fostered. So, 
I'm just so happy to be home. Like, I'm just at peace. Um, I'm, I'm going to spend the night in prayer in the presence of God. Um, nothing better than peace and the truth. And folks, then when the time is right, God knows who you are. God knows exactly who you are. And He knows exactly the kind of spouse and or friends, you know, spouse in particular, that is best for you. And He is going to bring you together in the perfect time. And um, I just, you know, I'm just so happy to be, I'm just going to spend time in the presence of Jesus tonight. It's so peaceful, so blissful. You're just like, man, praise God. I don't miss a single second of like, uh, just secular garbage. It's just it's totally empty. Um, and, uh, so, yeah, people, I'm excited to be, to be here in the presence of God. Um, and, uh, we're probably going to dig into some truth tonight, do some more jam preaching. Um, it's been a most epic week. Um, and that's probably, I'm going to spend my, my night in the truth, in peace and quiet, worshiping God, get up early, have a, an awesome God time, go to church early. Um, I, I just... I really want to see young people understand that only Jesus is the king. <laughs> only serving Jesus, directly the name of Jesus, is the gold medal. There is no name higher. There is nothing higher to do with your time in your youth. There's a great temptation in your youth. And I weep in particular for physically good looking people in this generation. Okay. By the way, I wasn't referring to myself when I did that motion. I'm just saying the human appearance, a general, like I think of physically good looking people, there's a great temptation in particular because it just, oh, I'm young, I'm good looking. I should just, you know, use this to please as many people as possible and have the time of my life right now. Um, God is so gracious. I mean, but uh, I just, I want to see people in love with Jesus, in love with God. I want to, like, let's meet on holy terms. Let's party on holy ground. Like, I want to see young, beautiful people worshiping Jesus. I want to see young, good-looking preachers that have rejected all the other options they could have taken. Like, I want to see the young, talented, good-looking people guided into preaching, Bible school. Men who are going to speak the truth. Okay? I'm so passionate about truth, it's crazy. I'm just studying, eating this stuff. I like, I have no patience. I, I, I love looking, you know, I love seeing pretty people. Absolutely, of course. I love seeing the pretty girls. It's just beautiful, made in the image of God. Absolutely wonderful. Uh, but I'm sorry, I love Jesus infinitely more. Like, <laughs> and it's like, it's, uh, you just, people got to, You've got to be in love with the truth. You've got to understand who Jesus is. No relationship is possible without that. So, folks, I'm just going to dig into the truth tonight. We're probably going to preach on some more gems from the English language. Um, and, uh, and then live for eternity today. I'm just going to turn on... Actually, I'm fine. Live for eternity... I'll turn on another light here. Um... <clears throat> Live for eternity today, as much as you can. Uh, you're not going to regret it at the end of your life. Uh, live for eternity today. 
Um, do that which makes you say, I love you, God. Don't, be, don't please people. Don't be a people pleaser. Don't be a phony. Don't be an impressor of people to get something out of them. That's silly. Um, serve Jesus today. I just want to see young people filled with the Holy Ghost. I, I, I will not be satisfied until I see a massive revival. I want to see everyone, men got to repent. Like there is, you do not, no one comes into the kingdom of heaven. Uh, you know, drinking a beer at the bar, laughing with their friends, thinking that I am just like this self-controlled unit that I just do whatever I want. It's like, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> we need repentance. When, like, we need repentance. There is no heart. God will simply, this is one of my favorite truths, God will simply not allow you to have your dream human relationship until you have given yourself to Him first. He simply will not allow it. He simply will not allow it to happen. You will go and you will go from crappy relationship to crappy relationship to broken relationship to, you know, just, just confusion and just messed up things and it just won't happen and you'll feel like you're losing your mind because you're not serving Jesus. You're not serving God. You're not pushing for Jesus. You're not in love with Jesus. You're not, you haven't given your whole heart and your whole life and your whole body and your whole will and minds to Jesus and the glory of his name. Until you do that, until you're just so sick, until you do that, God will simply not allow your dream human relationship to happen. You know, I want your spousal relationship. He simply will not allow that to happen because he is everything. He is everything. He is first. And uh, I just like, I'm living for Jesus. I'm baptizing my, I'm spending my life on the truth. I'm, I'm, I'm preaching eternal truth. I want to preach things that last forever. I want words coming out of my mouth that matter for eternity. I don't want to be sitting in a restaurant or a bar surrounded by secular junk, secular music, and just vain words that are just so shallow and just like, you know. Depth is satisfying. Depth is satisfying, you know. And, um, you know. An honest confession, I love beauty. Beauty is huge to me. So of course I have a desire to see a beautiful person. Of course, beauty is huge for me. I love visual beauty. It's one of the things that inspires me to worship God the most. But I crave to see girls having depth in God. You've got to be in love with the truth. You've got to be in love with the Bible. You've got to be absolutely deep in your knowledge of God. You've got to think Hebrew and Greek is awesome and fascinating. You've got to be in love with the truth and Jesus Christ and every word of God that we're solving mathematically in all these videos. I might as well say it, folks. If, if I can't meet a girl that is willing to watch all of my videos and believe everything that I have to say and spend hours and hours doing it, it's not going to happen. There's no relationship possible. I'm like, my brain is simply too different from yours, and it's just not going to happen. It's just not going to happen. Period. Period. Hallelujah. It's like, you've got to, women and men alike have got to, like, rise up out of their people pleasing. And the Lord has just been speaking this to me over and over again. How all of humanity today is trying to find satisfaction in human relationships. It's the number one thing people turn to. Oh, if I get a lot of good looking guys giving me attention. Oh, if I get that good looking girlfriend. Oh, if I, you know, have this person or these people. It's just all the wrong spirit. Are you serving Jesus directly? Are you living for Jesus? He'll take care of you. He's the king when he decides, if he decides, that the time is for He'll bring you two together. I just, um, 
I am not marrying some shallow, good-looking person. I'm sore. I'm not, it's just not possible. <laughs> they have to, whoever it is that I get, like, if it's God's will that I get married, they have to be willing to watch all the thousands of hours <laughs> of videos that I've produced as a result of thousands of hours of research in world history and the words of God and the languages of God and harvesting things mathematically. That's the only way it's going to happen because that's simply where I'm at. That's simply what's in my brain. That's simply what I've done. That's simply who I am. I can't, it's, it's, I'm just like, I'm done. And I'm satisfied. I'm like, I, I just, I just, I can't stand shallowness because shallowness is killing people. And it's disgusting. It's not right. You know? We don't have a lot of great achievers in history anymore because of the departure from God. Um, I believe that young people, I believe that people should have extremely high standards for, you know, human relationships. Because you know what? You might as well just spend time with God. <laughs> He's more satisfying. The truth is more satisfying than a dumb, shallow conversation with the prettiest, you know, most good-looking person you can imagine. It's just... So... I'm passionate about truth tonight. I want to live for eternity. I want my life to matter. I want my life to, I want my, the record of my life to be noble, eternal, lasting, the fruit of my lips to be epic and world changing and education changing and people healing. People are not epic enough. I want my life to be epic. So help me God. Um, so. I want to live for things eternal tonight. I want to meditate on things eternal tonight. I want to speak of things eternal tonight. I want to be closer to Jesus and the triune God and know more than, than I did, you know, at the present moment, as of, you know, after tonight. I want the highest blessing of God upon my life. I want to see souls saved. Hmm. You know, it's kind of an appropriate thought. Who wants, you know, why do you want to fit in? You're supposed to stand out, you know. Anyways, so. Folks, I just have to make an honest confession. I would love to have a gorgeous, Christian, talented, gifted, smart, intelligent, fun, beautiful, spirit-filled, Christian girlfriend that I am dating right now, <laughs> as a friend that is a wonderful friend and has that other half of God's endowment in the female sex that is just a sheer joy to be around. I don't have that right now. Um, and uh, I'm just like, it's, it's just very discouraging. Honestly, I feel very discouraged. <laughs> I honestly feel very discouraged <laughs> by what is out there to the point that I'm just like, you know what, I can't even think about it. Like, I'm so thankful for the words of Paul when he said, like, are you loose from a wife? Do not seek a wife. And Paul just said, you know, I don't, I don't have time. Like, I love, I'm thankful for the words of Paul. They just refocus you. You're just like, I have to keep going. You know? And trust God. Absolutely. God is sovereign. Hallelujah. 
but um, yeah. So <laughs> yeah, tonight in the truth, baby. <laughs> tonight in the truth. <laughs> oh my 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 my. So folks, just for sheer, I mean. To be honest, folks, what I am doing uh, right now is I'm going through basically as much as possible the Oxford English Dictionary and we're scooping up really awesome word gems that are just screaming out the glory of God mathematically. For example, this is a word God has been speaking to me a lot lately and that is the word punctual. The first half equals love, the second half equals love, and then when you talk about punctuality, I-T-Y adds another love on the end. Punctuality. Love, love, love. By divine ornaments, the glory of the Trinity. Love, 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 and punctuality. And uh, God has been speaking to me this for a while, like always show up early. Always show up early for an appointment. Be punctual. Well, punctual equals love plus love. And then punctuality is love plus love plus love. And that took me less than like 10 seconds to, to see it and to learn. You can study it more and you'll be more amazed. Like every second letter divides by three and they knit together like a sewing machine. And I can show this, I can show this to someone in kindergarten. I can show this to a child in less than five minutes and tell them the importance of being punctual and prove to them mathematically that we're punctual and they would be set for life. Wisdom is that expensive. It's so efficient. Can you imagine if an entire generation was taught the word punctual properly to the glory of the Trinity? And they actually understood the love of God in it. And that it's actually for your best health. When you're running around late all the time, when your life is so jam-packed and you're disrespecting appointments that you, and you're just so all over the place, you're shortening your lifespan. And you're not even enjoying yourself anymore because you've got so much cortisone stress flowing through your veins that you're just completely not even in peace. You're completely outside of enjoyment because you're, you're late for all your appointments. I make an intent to sh show up early for every appointment. <laughs> more time, more pleasure. It's a pleasure to be in peace. It's a pleasure to show up early and wait. So folks, that's what I'm doing. I'm honestly by the way, I'm a paper boy right now, which is by three, or a newspaper boy. Um, I'm honestly going through the entire English dictionary because I know that lasts forever. These words last forever. And we're, what I do, folks, is I'm going through the entire English dictionary methodically, and I'm circling words that I like and pop out at me and are mathematically glorious that I see at first glance, and I'm doing the math in my head as I do this. It's just, I like, it's more pleasurable to hold a book in my hands. And there's so much to, and then we're preaching on various ones, and here's a big word that this generation doesn't even know. Chastity. What does that mean? Pure. Abstinent. Not throwing your body around with, you know, chastity. It's such a beautiful word for the, for the number three. It starts with C, which is three, followed by nine, three times three, followed by the marriage couple made in heaven, S plus T, 39, followed by nine times nine, followed by 45. It adds to 96 perfectly, triple eight times four. Chastity. I, I, in case you haven't realized, folks, I am so angry. Probably my greatest hatred in this world is against ignorance. I hate ignorance. And I also hate disrespect for God, which is in, in turn a disrespect for the Word of God and the knowledge about God. There, nothing more. I, just, I hate ignorance and I hate people not wanting God. Just nothing worse than that. 
So for example, I can preach for a long time on this. So one of my favorite words in that I got today and for all time is the word pure. And that's where I was on to the word chastity. So, I was, um, so here it is, straight out of the dictionary. It's everlasting, folks. I even had a little paper mark in there. I just, I, I can't stand. I'm like, Lord, you're going to have to help me. God is going to have to help me, folks, because, you know, I've been very alone in this journey for a long time. Like, obviously, I'm a young, energetic, passionate man. It's like, you know, but to live for things eternal is what matters. So this was an awesome revelation. You're just like, the, the gold is so abundant. I'm just like, I don't just want to be making videos on a video camera. It's like, I would love, it, it's kind of a tough walk, folks. Do I have crowds of good looking people around me right now? Do I have pretty girls cheering for me from the fans? Do I have... You know, anyone that's, you know, paying attention and, you know, giving me eyeball time. I mean, these are things that human souls crave. But, you just, you just kind of realize that you just, <laughs> I want to behold beauty. I want to behold purity. Like, the words of God are beauty and purity. Until I see a woman that is like, in love with Jesus and exceedingly beautiful and like her heart is drop dead gorgeous I'm like I guess I'll just be you know in the eternal words of truth that actually last I'm like physical beauty doesn't last um, so here's an awesome revelation pure equals 60 pure equals 60 I love this it means unmixed unmixed is 90 unmixed set apart Sometimes I feel a little bit angry, folks. I'm like, why in the world am I so alone with all these revelations? Why am I the only one that's like digging into this? Everyone else is just playing around like a hobo and just like, oh, I just want my money, my career, my relationships, my humans. I'm just like, oh, it's just so retarded. It's like, isn't anyone going to go deeper? Please tell me there is a woman on this planet in the story of God that has the capacity and the patience to go a lot deeper for the glory of God. Please tell me. Please tell me. There are some human souls on this planet that will be actually capable. As far as I know, folks, I am probably the only one on this planet that has ever seen the fact that full moon contains love plus love in 427s, along with all the other thousands of gems that contain love in them. That's a very interesting place to be in. I'm like, if I have a wife, she's got to be able to handle all this. Anyways, it's insane. It just keeps getting crazy and crazier. Anyways, I'm probably going to go to bed early tonight. It's been the most. Because um, I like getting up early. And it's been the most epic day as well.